Everything was going well. I was living any young aspiring sportsman's dream. I was playing professional rugby for one of the best clubs in the world, Saracens. I had a promising career ahead of me. I represented England at all age group levels. And I was involved in the England under-20s team that won the World Cup in 2013. In my short time at Saracens, I played in the Premiership. I was awarded the under-18 Nike Most Promising Player, won the LV Cup, and represented the Barbarians. We can all look back in our lives and see those defining moments that lead us to where we are today. Those one moments, that one decision that can change the course of our lives forever. In September 2015, I suffered a head injury, which caused me to be sidelined and unable to play. It worsened with further activity, and I had to stop all aspects of life and exercise. Unable to articulate or understand my symptoms, I was quick to see my first specialist, and I was immediately put on medication for my headaches. A month later, I was diagnosed with a balance disorder, and my vestibular rehabilitation began. These involved eye movement exercises, which in theory would retrain my balance system and correct the distortion in my eyes. I did these every day, six times a day, in my flat, so you could imagine what my neighbors thought. With any injury, a plan was put in place, and I fully expected to be back within a few weeks, if not months. But days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and I wasn't feeling much better. Every morning, I'd wake up with the level of excitement that my symptoms would have gone, but I'd soon be reminded of the reality of where I was. I'd go back to my checklist and think about how my eyes how is my head? What did I do yesterday that could have made me feel worse today? And I'd get up, and I'd say to myself, you will feel better tomorrow. Just get through today. In reality, I was housebound. I couldn't watch screens. I could barely go to the supermarket. I couldn't walk on grass without it inducing a headache. I couldn't focus on moving objects. I couldn't go to loud and busy environments. I couldn't exercise. My days consisted of sitting in my flat, trying to find things to do that didn't involve watching screens. I folded clothes. I cooked. I did countless jigsaw puzzles. And I found myself sitting on a beanbag, facing a wall, listening to audiobooks. No more than a month ago, I was at the peak of my fitness, hoping to progress in my career, competing with some of the most established sportsmen in the world. And now this was my new contrasting life to a once professional athlete. I went to bed as early as possible because I wanted the day to be over. And I got up late as I didn't want the day to begin. I was a rugby player. That was my identity. That was who I was, and I was losing every aspect of that, mentally and physically. My dose of medication was ever-increasing in order for me to complete everyday tasks and to complete my rehab. <clears throat> Some days, I'd break down in tears, reminiscing on the life I once had. And although my symptoms did improve over the years, I, feel, I still felt I was half the person I was. And I considered myself a burden on those around me. And I remember this like it was yesterday. One of my lowest points. I was driving home, and my eyes were worsening due to the motion in the car. And out of frustration, I slammed my foot on the accelerator. And I found myself driving at 90 miles an hour down a country lane. And I thought, if anything happened to me, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. But I look back at these defining moments, and I think about the mental abuse I put on myself every single day, asking myself, what if I did this? 
where would I be now? So I had a quote that was framed for me. And it said, life can only be understood backwards, but must be lived forwards. And I loved it. And I saw it every day as a ploy to re-identify myself and move forward. But I struggled to live by it for years. Because my vestibular rehabilitation had been going on for three years. And I struggled to find hope for living a normal life again. But when I think about what a setback actually is, and I had a clearer mind, I thought to me, a setback is only something we perceive as bad due to the outcome of a decision we have made. And if we went back to that place and thought, would we make the same decision again, not knowing what we know now? The answer is probably yes. So why do we dwell on it? Why do we get stuck in the past? I kept saying to myself, why did this happen to me? I don't deserve this. This isn't me. So how do we control our negative thoughts? How do we change them? How do we make them work in our favor? Shakespeare's protagonist, Hamlet, asserts there's neither good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So how do we change our mindset? How do we take back the power to determine our future through changing our thoughts? Eight months ago, I'd had enough. My medication was changing the only thing I had left, and that was my personality. I hadn't exercised in years, and my body was changing in a way I promised myself it never would. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said, this isn't you. This isn't you. I immediately stopped taking my medication. I found an online concussion fix program and put together an extensive rehab schedule that I incorporated every day, including exercise, mental health, neck rehab, sleep, diet, everything that would incorporate my recovery and enhance it going forward. I didn't see my injury as a setback anymore. I saw it as a challenge. I saw it as something I could use to better myself in the future. I meticulously watched my diet. I started doing a 20-minute bike every single day, monitoring my heart rate and reviewing my symptoms. I set my heart rate at a sub-symptom threshold level, so below where I would get symptoms, and I monitored this. And I increased it until I was accustomed to the intensity. I got to the point where I was getting up at 6 a.m., doing my bike before I went to work, having a 10-hour day, and driving to South East London to coach rugby with no worsening of symptoms at all. That's a far cry from sitting on a beanbag looking at a wall. I look back on my journey and I can only see the positives now of the person who I've become. I'm more motivated now than ever before. I appreciate everything around me and the people I love. But the one void in my life I thought I'd never overcome is the time I lost through my injury. But I think back now, and to where I am today, I know I will achieve far more than I ever would have if I hadn't been through my ideal my ordeal. I know that I will appreciate everything in the future more than ever. I don't see setbacks anymore. I see challenges. And if a problem arises or a negative thought, I think about what I can put in place, what I can control to change my own future. So I challenge you to think about things that you can control. Think about how you can change your thoughts into positive ones. How you can change your mindset. Because mindset really does matter. Because it can be your biggest hindrance or your only cure. And there is a saying of a man or a woman's shoes speaks the story of their life through the path they've walked down. And I've brought something with me today which is a pair of boots. And these were the last boots my agent ever sent to me. And I was unable to wear them because of my injury. 
But I promised myself, when I got these boots, I'd never wear them unless I played rugby again. But little did I know, I would far surpass that goal. I've achieved so much more than I ever thought I would. These boots represent my past. They represent the hard work I've put in to get to where I am today. They represent what I've been through. They represent who I am now, and they represent my future of what I'm going to achieve and who I'm going to become. These boots mean far more to me now than I ever thought they would. And I don't think I'll ever wear them again. Because these boots tell the story of the paths I've been unable to walk down, but how I'm better off as a result. Thank you.